Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine, welcoming you in and letting you know it's time for French Quick Bites Edition, where you can grab your miles with a side of smiles, take them on the run midday, in the afternoon, or a late night snack attack. And we are going across the pond, checking in with our friend, the king, and making sure that we get all the fish and chips that we can possibly handle because this week we are talking about the London Marathon. So cheerio. Would you like a spot of tea, Christine? I do love tea. And I don't know, though, if I am a miff or a tiff. I think I'm more of a tiff, which it's tea in first or milk in first. I think this is a big controversy you had in the UK. Um, and so I don't know. I so think you're a I- tiff? I'm a, I think I'm a tiff. I don't think I've ever put milk in first. You are? Yes, because you put the milk in first, so then you pour the tea and mixes all up. Even though I don't do milk in my tea, but that's a sidebar. Okay. But yeah, you do it so it yeah. mixes up and you don't have to dirty a spoon. Less dishes. In- interesting. I feel like um, folks that maybe haven't heard this terminology think that we're confusing MIF with MILF, but I promise it's a different I mean, thing. <laughs> maybe I'm a MILF too. Let's, let's, Girl. let's, let's start a poll. Um, uh, own that spiciness. Own that spiciness. Well, let's let's maybe tamper down a little bit of the heat, though, as we discuss the London Marathon history. What I love right out of the gate about London is that they said, you know what? We love New York City. We're going to bring this back home because we deserve to have it on our side of the pond as well. So they were inspired by the New York City Marathon, which, of course, was established in 1970. And if you guys want to go back and listen to that quick bite, you're welcome to. So Olympic steeplechase medalist Chris Brashear and John Disley were determined that London Marathon would also showcase the very best of the London city and the capital of England. So they also declared the event would help people to quote unquote, have more fun, provide some happiness and a sense of achievement in a troubled world. I think that should be our mission statement moving forward. (laughs) I mean, I'm pretty sure there's not any problems just stealing it from them, right? Yeah, right. I I can't imagine they were mine. Well, the event captivated people's imagination right from the get-go with more than 22,000 runners applying to take part in the first race, which is mind-blowing. Like, where do you, uh, can you imagine, like, our, that would be like us dropping our first episode or hosting our first retreat and a mil- immediately having 22,000 runners. That means that the UK was starved for this. So good for them for knowing that they definitely had a great market. However, the original capacity was capped due to safety reasons. So there were only about 7,700 runners who crossed the first ever start line in Greenwich Park. And that's just, I don't know, a small fraction of the 45,000 plus runners that we see in modern versions of this event. Just a drop in the bucket. (laughs) Yep. It's what I find interesting about it is that it's also largely flat. It kind of loops around a lot of different neighborhoods, but um, it's located kind of around the River Thames. So it does a little bit of looping through like more modern aspects, also some more historical aspects. Absolutely fascinating, but I feel like I've now gotten into that aspect when I know you are going to dazzle us with all of the elite knowledge that you have in that noggin of yours of some of the records that have been set there. Well, I will start off with Norway's Ingrid Christensen dominating the women's race in the mid-1980s, winning not one, not two, not three, but four titles. And she is still the only woman to ever achieve that feat. So, I mean, yes. And of course, we can talk about the elites all day, every day, and how the Kenyans completely dominate the field at a lot of the majors. But at the age of 26, Kenya's two-time winner, Bridget Koske, has time on her side in her bib to match and possibly surpass that achievement. So she, you know... She's not knocking on history's door. <laughs> well, I'm sure that if anybody could do it, it would be Bridget. But now there's been also quite a few world records. And I think that they're like continually being beaten. And so we remember back in during New York City, um, Greet Waits became uh, being a record holder for New York City. Well, she also went on to become a big record holder at the first London Marathon in 1983 or became the first London Marathon world record holder in 1983 with the time of two hours, 25 minutes and 29 seconds. Those times still blow my mind because I think of my half marathon finish time and then thinking 
I would have to double the distance in a similar time is just mind blowing to me. Well, and then Ingrid bettered that two years later with 221.06. And then let's not forget that Paula Radcliffe breaking that world record twice, bringing it down to 215 and 25 seconds in 2003. And then it still holds as a course record to this day, but at 217 for the women's only marathon in 2005. So that 2003 was for the mixed marathon, meaning that was like the record for both of the boys and the girls, all about that girl power again, Paula. Well, and then Mary Katani got the world record in 2017, which I actually kind of love that it was 2017 and her time was 217.01 because I'm a numbers door. So I still love though, uh, for when the pandemic happened and they made the loop course for the London Marathon, Mm -hmm. one, Sarah Hall, go YouTube the finish of Sarah Hall. She dug deep. But my all-time favorite is after Molly Seidel got done, she proudly declared on international television that she needed the bathroom. And (laughs) I just... If you needed a reason to love Molly more, there you go. So, Kira, I'm curious, does she use a porta potty or does she get like her own bathroom? I think they have like an elite porta potty. So maybe the liquid's not just blue. Maybe it's, I don't know. I was going to say gold, but then that didn't track well. Anyway, please help me pivot out of this. Let's talk about the men's world record. (laughs) Before we do it, I do have to say that London was the first time I ever experienced a female urinal. So there is a little bit of interesting aspects of the London Marathon um, where they had, I guess, a sponsor supplying everyone with she goes and you could she go before you actually towed up to the start line there. I was not prepared. (laughs) Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about records. Let's keep the, keep that going. Let's pivot out of it. <laughs> there, there's no good segue. So we're just going to rip off that Band-Aid and talk about the world record set the London Marathon in 2002 by Khalid Knochi, who ran a time of 205.38. The men's course record is 202.37, and that was set in 2019 by four-time winner, and arguably, I would say the goat of mm-hmm. all that is running, Mr. Elliot Kachoge. Yeah, which, I would say so too. I mean, talk about smiling. His mm-hmm. race photos are things of legend. I think he might be the goat in that versus you. I hate to say it. Why doesn't he have a sponsor for like, I don't know, like Invisalign <laughs> or toothpaste or something? Because he's got the best smile ever. So I'm, I'm shocked. He doesn't that need no help. T- he he just I know, is. but but seriously, like there there should be some kind of somebody capitalizing on that world infamous smile. But let's also talk about maybe what puts a smile on all of our faces is the wheelchair race course record holder, Kurt Fernley of Australia, setting the men's wheelchair race course at one hour, 28 minutes and 57 seconds in 2009. Can people even keep track of all of these numbers that are rolling around out here? Because that's just like, I, again, mind blowing in terms of the time. And no. the women's wheelchair wheelchair course record belonging to Switzerland's Manuela Schar, who finished in a one hour, 39 minutes and 57 seconds in 2017. So again, just London be bringing it, girl. <laughs> I really, I think out of all the majors that are not within the US, because mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm very fortunate, that's easier to travel to. I think mm-hmm. London entices me probably the most. I've always loved England and I feel not just because I can actually semi talk the language or speak the language. See, I can't even do English. Um, I just, there's something about it. I love the idea of the course. I love the energy. And I think that probably would be my number one on the international list. I, I would say that if you have control of what order you do the world marathon majors, if that's something that you're pursuing and you don't just go with what most of us do, which is you get them in whatever order you can get into them, 
I would say that London being the final plume in your cap would be the best way to celebrate it. The energy there is true. I know I say that about every race, but London's energy was so much so that the spectator that I had along with me for the race couldn't find me with the throngs of humans that like toe up to the line, like, like nothing else. It, it like trumps absolutely New York City's crowds, Chicago's crowds. It is huge. However, let's talk about what makes this race really unique and things to look for on the course. First and foremost, let's learn from Coach Christine's not to do list and let's not traverse the entire city before the race on foot because that's what I did. I think I clocked maybe about 28, maybe 30 miles before the race. Um, oh, that was, sounds like a great plan. Yeah, because I was so excited to see London. So let's not do that. While you can use the tube um, to get to a few choice destinations, I would, again, going back to that river cruise, it's a great way to see the city without spending too much time on your feet. Now, what I was talking about, that energy, ooh, during the race, this is the energy that will keep you going for all 26 miles. You're gonna see historical sites, but like Buckingham Palace, House of Parliament, Tower Bridge, getting to cross over Tower Bridge. They always have the photographers there, heads up. Make sure that you have a big smile on your face like Kipchoge at that area, because that's some of the best photos you'll get of the entire race, um, Greenwich Park. All of this is incredible, but it's the costumes. Like the costumes make Run Disney look like Run Disney light, like the, like costuming light, because people go all out for costumes in London. Well, we I, I heard mean, about the Big Ben. Uh, like, okay. What other There's, costumes are there? I think I saw someone wearing a full hoop skirt. What sticks in mind though is for Save the Rhinos, a charity in um, London, or it has a all of their runners wear rhino suits. Nothing will quite hit your ego like getting passed by somebody wearing a 60 pound rhino suit for the record in a race that that hurts a little bit, a little bit. Is that a requirement? <laughs> like, is that a requirement of the charity? I don't know. I was very curious as well, but everyone that I saw, and it seems to be an annual yearly thing, like that's what they're known for. So I think that it may be part of that requirement. Do they say uh, God, do they say, uh, God save the queen. Oh, well, I guess not the queen anymore. God save the rhinos. I think so. Or at least you do if you're running for that charity. And I think that's also what lends itself to this specific race more so than all the others. While we talk about charity bibs for every single race, they're all possible. This one is truly the record holder of bringing in billions of dollars for charities and nonprofits. So what you have energy wise and the support crowds for those charities and those nonprofits, other folks that just kind of feel that kinship of being in the trenches of raising money for a cause that they're very, very passionate about. Absolutely phenomenal. So I will say that's probably the best feeling of being there. And, you know, I don't, I, I did not take place of Stranger Danger Aid Station but I kept losing all of the water stations because of the amount of crowds. So after I think I wasn't able to find maybe three water stations in a row, I did go off the course, went into a convenience store and did get a beer because when in London. <laughs> the, I find it hilarious. The only time you drink beer I know, is when you're running. Yeah, absolutely. So again, a lot of fun. I would not take that race as while there are world records to be had there and it is a flat and fast course. I personally would not recommend that as a PR course because there's just so much to take in. But I after, think the general consensus is like, don't go to any of the world majors trying to PR. Yeah, for real. There's just so much. I mean, unless if it's your backyard, you're paying so much to be there. It took so much to get there. Now, I do know a lot of folks like to Boston qualify at Boston. So that maybe has a different, but maybe not for your first one. I'd say if you're there for a second or a third one, that might be a bigger, bigger endeavor to do. I After just want to go stand in front of Buckingham Palace. Is that what honesty. you want to do? Is that what you're doing with your medal? Probably. Okay. I'm probably going to stand with one of the guards and just like look super stoic and 
chill. I, I could see that. I mean, again, great photo opportunities with your medal after the marathon. I'm personally saying, hey, if you came from the States, you already have a rather expensive flight to get out to England. I'd say go ahead and jump on either the train or take an inexpensive flight to another destination that's on your list. Um, I traveled to see a stone to see Stonehenge and then did a couple of other trips and tours while I was there. So did you I bring think- your medal to Stonehenge? Yes. Did I take my picture with my medal in every single location afterwards? Absolutely. Like that's Ooh. that's absolutely to to be had. I'm sure I have it. I should probably it's probably on your little virtual somewhere. uh picture frame. <laughs> now let's talk about food. <gasps> oh, okay. I okay. I don't know how vegetarian friendly other than fish and chips. I feel kind of similar to Berlin. This one may be a little challenging for you as well. Um, It's a very heavy meat based meat and potatoes. So from those fish and chips, it goes on to some really heavy dishes, except that they do have some of the most amazing Indian food there. So I will say you could probably find a lot of vegetarian Indian dishes that you would love. But again, they have a bit of that black pudding that I can't see you getting down with um, scotch. You know, all their puddings, none of them are in team sweet, by the way. They're all team savory because they're all like (laughs) meat based or potato based. They're all definitely- Talk about stranger danger pudding. (laughs) Yeah. However, there are a few must have team sweets, sticky toffee pudding. Okay, so there is one, a fruit crumble and Banoffee pie, which I'm not really familiar with, and now I want to try it. A little bit of a team sweet and savory to have is we could always have Ashman tea. It has assorted sandwiches, maybe like a little cucumber or a scone for both of us, a savory scone for you, a sweet scone for me. What do you think? I I have to ask them. I'm about to spill some tea. Okay. They are big tea drinkers. Uh Uh-huh. As coffee lovers, are we welcomed or are we looked at strangely if we don't partake in tea? That you are welcomed. You're likely, I don't know that you would like most of the coffee that I consumed over there. I did not like so much so that I switched to tea the entire trip. Um, But their black tea is as caffeinated as our tea. So I actually think their black tea is so strong and flavorful that it's almost like coffee, really. And See, it is- but I'm not a good tea drinker. All I do is I do basically like an entire lemon in my tea. I think that if you were to have a traditional black tea from England, you may change your mind and have it with milk, milk in first, and I think you would enjoy it. I really do. Uh, it, it's very, very similar to our coffee. To I'll take what my milk self and go get my tea. I guess. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to. You'll have to give it a try. I again didn't particularly love the coffee there, um, but did partake in tea every single place. And I think my hotel room actually had like a whole big fancy tea set up. So I went ahead and experience that so what Um, are we watching while we're sipping uh chariots of fire like it is the one movie that everybody says as you first come to running you must watch chariots of fire have i done it yet no i must say i'm like i'll be honest i've never (laughs) it ranks number one on list after list after list of much watch running movies it's based on a true story uh talks about the 1981 british historical drama film It's all about two British track athletes. One is Jewish and one is Christian faith and they're competing as both countrymen, but also to medal in the 1924 Olympics. So I think that this is gonna also go to my must watch list. I think I'm gonna like bump this up to the top of my list. Now the next one feels to me like it's almost like Britney runs a marathon guy edition because it's guy edition. <laughs> like I think like we have Britney runs a marathon as girls. I think dudes would totally feel more akin to um, honorable mention going to run fat boy run. It's a 2007 British American comedy film directed by David Schwimmer. And it's the story of Dennis, who is a middle-aged guy who sets out to run a marathon in an attempt to win back his ex-fiance Libby because he left her at the altar. Does he win her back? I don't know, my friends. You're going to have to watch the movie and see. But the... Even even as a runner, though, I'm like, oh, I'm like, that guy ran a marathon. Yeah, I'm going to marry him. No, that's not how it works. Like, I'm sorry. She was quite impressed from what I saw. Did you actually watch this movie? 
I love the actor Simon Pegg. So I did. I actually thought it was really interesting. And I also found it interesting that it was directed by David Trimmer of Friends. Um, so, it, and it's got really great actors like Hank Azaria is another one of my favorites. It's a really oh, good one. He's a prolific right? voice actor. So, I mean, especially for us Disney fans. So yeah. I think, I think Friends, you may want to add it. Is it the best movie ever? It's why it got honorable mention. So <laughs> I, I I don't know. I feel like I have to watch this without such a critical because again, I'm sitting there like when I think about trying to win somebody back, I don't automatically go to let me run a marathon and smell and have no time to do anything <laughs> but run a mile on end. I'm sorry if my husband ever wants to know a way to impress me. I don't know if running a marathon even, even as a running coach is getting the flag up the pole. I, well, ultimately, we'll have to find out if Libby decides that it does it for her. She seemed quite impressed early on. You'll have to, friends, you'll have to report back to us if you decide to watch this movie, um, what you thought of it. But with that said, we have officially concluded our World Marathon Majors Quick Fights. Again, head over to the blog. It's a little different over there. I feel like we made it more of kind of like a mullet party in the front with the podcast business in the back or is it back it's vice versa it's party in the and, back okay party in the back parties in the back here with the podcast it's a little bit more serious over on the blog where you're getting some practical knowledge of training a very race specific workout so i think you guys will enjoy some of that information if you're heading there and of course some logistics of where to stay and just how to gain, gain entry into some of these World Marathon majors that could be quite challenging. But we'd love for you to join us again with Time for Bunch Long Run Edition dropping this Friday. Come back for more of our midweek quick fights, of course, dropping on Wednesday. And regardless of when or where, we will keep serving up more miles with, with a side of major smiles.